Hey YouTube, this is Bill. For the people who've seen the last video dealing with the CP8, QSC CP8, this is the next step up. So on the right, we have the QSC CP8. Great portable speaker, incredible power, incredible price. But the challenger today is in the same family the QSC family. It's the next step up in their line. It's the QSC K8.2. So let's begin. Both speakers, eight inch woofers. Obviously on the left, you see the K8.2 is larger form factor. And of course, heavier, a little heavier, not much. And then we have price. Price goes up again. Normally in any company's line, as the speakers get better, the price jumps up accordingly. Again, the price isn't a huge jump up, but for some people, it'll be a factor. Okay, just back to rewind, give you a little background. Uh, I'm doing a lot of videos, if you wanna go back and check some of them, about portable PAs. So I started this journey with uh, the Bose S1 Pro, a single S1 Pro, super lightweight speaker. Then I went to a second S1 Pro, stereo, wireless, and then I added a sub one. So that's, that's a system in itself. Again, those systems, that system in it is great for small get-togethers, barbecues, small weddings, but this is the next step up. This is more of a QSC is more of a professional line uh, than Bose, unless you go to the, the Bose, uh, the high, the higher line, the Pro, Pro series. That's and you can check out those videos. So QSC, uh, you're gonna get a lot more power, quite a bit more power, at least four times the power of an S1 Pro. So that's why I say this is the next step up if you need it. Unfortunately, you lose your battery power going this route and you lose Bluetooth. But again, professionals, gigging professionals, really do not uh, need battery power. They prefer AC, and they definitely don't prefer Bluetooth. Bluetooth is all kinds of uh, disconnects and interference with, with customers. So they hardwire, they go through a mixer. So that's not really an issue. So if you need the next step up, you're, you got it playing to a larger audience this is my recommendation. Also musicians, musicians, uh, live musicians, unless you're playing to a very small uh, acoustic set, they would step up from the S1 Pro to the QSC line. So here we have the speakers turned around and the first thing you might notice on the K8.2 on the left, you have a digital screen. I don't have it on right now. I'm not gonna run through the whole uh, thing with you, but I'm sure there's plenty of videos online about the speaker. It's, it's not a new speaker. It's been out for a number of years. The CP8 is a new, it's a newer speaker. So with that um, digital processing with the screen, you have all kinds of menus you can dive into, and there's a lot more control that you can tailor the speaker to your liking. Again, for someone like myself who was just doing um, quick, quick things outside, portable PA. Some people uh, prefer the, the CP8 where it's all, you don't have to dive into menus. It's all done by hand and by clicks. So um, I actually prefer that. It's just quicker. On the K8.2, you see on the bottom, there's a blue uh, AC connector. That is a locking connector. Again, more for the professional gigging musician. They don't have to worry about uh, someone kicking their power cord out. The uh, CP8 does not have the locking power cord. Again, the, the, what I'm going over now are cost saving uh, the way QSC was able to trim the price for the CP8. So that's one thing that uh, you, you might keep in mind, the power locking. Also on the CP8, you have an 1 8 inch line, but you don't have a volume control on that third channel. And the QSC does. Let me show that to you. 
Here's what I'm talking about a little closer up. We have channel C, uh, 1 8 inch jack right here. And here it has a gain control, which the CPA does not have. Here is the locking uh, AC connector I'm talking about. Of course, here is our digital screen and it has all kinds of menus. You can go through an EQ where the CPA is pretty fixed. It has a couple of DSP settings. And this has uh, XLR outs that the QSC CPA doesn't have. And they both have a mix out where you can run to another speaker or a subwoofer. Taking a look at our CP8. So here is our channel three and there's no volume control. So you have to use your phone or tablet or whatever your source is. So that's a downside. This, this is something I like uh, more on the CP8. It has nice hash marks, very clear at the one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock position. It's very uh, visible. And going back to the K.2, they don't have that. I'm wondering why they wouldn't do that. That's, that's kind of disappointing. I like the CP8 better. So I know what a lot of people are thinking. Um, let's get to the important part, price. Okay, so I mentioned in the previous videos, CP8 is, in my opinion, the bargain of the PA world. At $399, we can round it up to $400. It's just an incredible uh, bargain for what you're getting. Cheaper than a Bose S1 Pro at $650. On the air left, your K8.2 jumps up, like I mentioned, in the line. So it goes from $400, and there was just a price increase recently. It went up to $700. So it's a $300 difference jumping up between the two speakers. So that's what this video is pretty much about. Is it worth it? So let's talk about it. CP8, 1000 watts, which is very, very powerful. As I mentioned, compared to an S1 Pro, it's about four times the power of an S1 Pro. QSC 8.2 jumps up to 2000 watts. So big jump in power. But the reason why I, I'll say right off the bat that it's worth the $300, again, I, I can imagine people saying, yeah, you're spending my money. But for my, my own reasoning, it's worth the extra $300 for one reason that stands out. And that is when you crank it up, when you get to your maximum volume, especially outdoors or in a live band situation, the CP8 will start sounding harsh, a little brittle at its limit where the K8.2 has that much more headroom. It just keeps going on and on, couple of rungs ahead of the CP8. And to me, that's, that's worth the extra money, especially in a live situation where you need that extra power. As a drummer also, I've run into a situation, I play electronic Roland drums, and those, those drum pads and those pads they need, um, they need some kind of preamp in front of it. And I really don't like taking a mixer, especially with these microsystems I'm trying to uh, demonstrate here. So I plugged in my Roland drum pad into the CPA. It, it was good, but it just didn't have the, the power I would need in a live situation. On the other hand, the K8.2 has a high Z setting. And that made all the difference in the world. I, I would say double or triple. So when you hit that snare drum sound, the crack of a snare drum, it was good on the CP8, but on the K8.2, it was three times the quality. So if you run into that kind of situation, I don't know what instruments that, uh, that might need a preamp like, like electronic drums, but of course the high Z is also for electric guitar. So to me, that, that alone uh, is worth the $300 right there. This is what I'm talking about right here on game B, channel B. Uh, you have a high Z line. And again, you set that in the, from the digital menu. 
incredible difference in power. The CPA does have uh, very good DSP choices. So what I'm talking about is right here. Uh, they have default setting. I have mine at default exterior sub, external sub, because I'm using a subwoofer with it. Dance, dance with external sub, floor monitor, and speech. So the KA point can do all of that uh, on their menus. Again, but you have to go through the screen, which is, in, in my book, a little slower. But usually people set it one time for what they like, and, and that's pretty much it. Again, because the CP8 is a uh, bargain price unit, you don't have any EQ settings. You don't have bass, treble, mids, nothing. Where the K8.2 has an extensive EQ section. Again, through menus, it's not um, through a dial. I know on the old QSC line, they used to have a, um, a switch where you can just do a bass boost or a uh, vocal boost. They've done away with that, unfortunately. So with that increase of power, 2,000 watts, K8.2 compared to 1,000 watts, uh, what you, the important number you want to look at is max dB. So the CP8 is maxed out at 124 dB, and the K8.2 goes up to 128 dB. So 4 dB is not huge, but like I mentioned, when you turn it up loud, to getting close to its maximum, that's when the, the K8.2 stays clear. Another difference is coverage. The CP8 is 90 degrees coverage, and the K8.2 jumps up to 105 degrees. Again, every little bit helps in a live situation. The CP8 is, has a fixed Low, low cut at 80 hertz, where the K8.2 has choices again through the digital menu. You can set it at 80, 100, or 125. Again, more, more choices for geared toward professional musicians. I talked about the locking power. I talked about the high Z on the K8.2. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is on the front, of uh, the CP8, again, cost cutting measure to keep it at $400. There's no power indicator. The K8.2 has a power indicator. I kind of like that from a distance. I like to know my equipment is on before I start. And if I don't have a power indicator, I kind of find myself wandering to the back to see the green lights. So that's another factor. K8.2 has a, um, a dual mount on the bottom. I'll show that to you where you can tilt the speaker. CP8 does not have that. And the K8.2 is fan cooled. Again, the fan is very good. You don't hear it. But again, for, for a gigging musician who's playing for a number of hours, that fan uh, will give your speaker greater longevity. In the back here, uh, we have these heat fins, and the back does get slightly hot to the touch, but again, that's dealing with the cooling for the 2,000 watts. When you go over to the CP8, you don't have any of the cooling fans, fins, sorry. With the size difference, you do have a slight weight increase. So the CP8 is 21 pounds, very manageable. And then when you jump up to the K.2, it's 27 pounds. So again, not a big deal for myself, but for some people that extra six pounds might be a deal breaker, especially at the end of the night when you're not only carrying one speaker, you're carrying all your gear. It, it, it's definitely um, feels a little heavier hoisting it up onto a pole. Here's a nice comparison chart I found online. So here on top, you have your price difference, $399 compared to $699. Then we go down here to 1,000 watts CP8, 2,000 watts for the K8.2. On the left, there's your figure for max SPL, DB, 124. 
dB for the CP8. K8.2 is 128 dB, 4 dB greater. And um, what I've read is when you get to 6 dB greater, the ear perceives twice the volume. So 4 dB um, between the two units is, is a difference. Not huge, though. Uh, here is the coverage angle, 90 degrees for the CP8, 105 for the K8.2. Going down here, you see crossovers. It says for the CP8, not specified. I'm gonna tell you right now, it's fixed at 80. And for the K8.2, you have your choices there, 80, 100, or 125, depending on your top. And then at the bottom here, parametric EQ, CP8 says none. That is definitely um, not good. I like to be able to EQ my speaker. And then on the C K8.2, you have quite a bit of control going into the menu. Of course, um, you can always use, most people with this type of speaker are using a mixer anyhow. So you don't necessarily have to do your EQing on the speaker itself. And the last difference on the bottom, 21 pounds for the CP8 and 27 pounds K8.2, six pounds greater. Here's the bottom of your K8.2, and you notice it has two different pole mounting options, and one of them uh, gives you a certain number of degrees tilt downward. Again, the CP8 does not have that. Here are the K8.2 in the downward tilt position. Again, this would be used if you were playing maybe on a stage and you want to point your, your sound down toward the audience. CPA doesn't have that option. Again, cost-cutting feature. Both speakers have the ability to be played as monitors and they have DSP settings to match. So here is the K8.2 in the monitor position. I've had people ask me, you know, they, they have our beginning band, they're looking for their first PA system front of the house, and they've been recommended for a five piece band, 15 inch tops, but they can't afford really quality tops. Should they get something cheaper? And so my comeback or my answer is get a pair of K8.2s and then in the future, when you can afford the 15 inch tops, you can transition your K8.2s as monitors and they make wonderful monitors. And so does the CP8. Okay, let's wrap this video up. Uh, the S1 Pros that I've done all those videos about are my number one choice for something to pick up and go, something uh, playing informally for small groups. But if I have a gig that's more serious, number of people, then I go to the QSC line, either one of these. And if it's a really serious gig, then I go to K8.2, hands down, for that extra headroom. So you are paying a little more money. Of course, money is a factor, but in the long run, when you look back at something like the K8.2, I've had it for a number of years, and I have no reason, I have seen nothing out there that I can upgrade to, even though many people um, love the Yamaha line, the DRX, I believe, similar price, great, great speaker. I just never have heard it myself, but I'm very satisfied. I have no reason to upgrade these particular speakers. So uh, it comes down to price, but what you're getting is quite a bit. You're getting that extra power. You're getting that high Z. You're getting that locking AC. It's just a more professional speaker, hands down. So that pretty much wraps it up. In my book, uh, it's worth the extra money. The K8.2 is, is just my number one mobile rig over a subwoofer, of course. It's, it doesn't put out the low end I need, especially as a drummer. And one more thing I wanna mention, uh, for the keyboarders out there, I don't, I don't play keyboards. There's a, a site called the Nor, Nord uh, Keyboard Line Forum, and there's a guy named C. Fallis, and he put it, he's a professional musician, keyboardist, and he has all kinds of gear, twice as much as I have. 
and he, he has a 20 page thread on the Nord forum and it's all about portable PAs for keyboards. And he goes on and on, he's go, he tells you about all the different uh, keyboard PAs that he's gone through and his number one recommendation for a reasonable priced uh, purchase is the K8.2. And he just says it, he uses a pair of them behind him on poles and it just has incredible clarity and it has the power to play, uh, to keep up with a live band behind you, a drummer, a bass guitarist, guitarist. So that's his number one recommendation. Uh, there is something a little more expensive. <laughs> Actually, it's double the price and I do have it. I, and I bought it because of his recommendation. Uh, but that's um, another video. But this is, this is what I would recommend recommend for my number one portable micro rig, a K8.2 over a portable subwoofer, either a sub one, uh, the, the EV ELX 200, or of course, if you want to really go all out, K8.2 over a sub two would be, just be an incredible micro rig. Uh, I could do a video on those in the future. We will see. Forgot to mention something important uh, about both speakers, and that is the incredible warranty that no other company can match. Six years, bumper to bumper on QSC line. So that again is worth some extra money. I have had to use that warranty on other speakers and a shout out to QSC. They have great customer service. You can call them anytime and they have good customer support. So in this family feud, QSC against QSC, I say it's a knockout. K8.2 is definitely the winner for a couple hundred dollars more money. Incredible speaker. My number one portable PA rig. Highly recommended. Hope you enjoyed. Later.